scientists have added support to the RNA hypothesis of how life first formed on Earth. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the one-pot recipe for RNA nucleotides edition. I'm Julie Wolf, science communication specialist here at ASM. Today, we'll be highlighting a paper from science that provides a recipe to synthesize some of the basic building blocks of life. Now, one hypothesis for abiogenesis, or the formation of biological life from non-biological precursor molecules, is the RNA world hypothesis. This posits that RNA molecules were the first biological molecules that formed in that primordial soup, uh, which is the conditions of Earth around 4 to 4.2 billion years ago, and is supported by the fact that RNA can be both a code-containing molecule uh, when one looks at its nucleotide sequence, and also can have activity as various catalytic RNAs have uh, since been discovered. However, even the first hypothetical um, RNA molecules must have come from somewhere, and scientists have long wanted to replicate the conditions similar to those of the primordial soup in which this RNA theoretically formed, to test whether lightning could strike twice, so to speak. Early Earth was much different than the one that we recognize today. There was no oxygen, and that the atmosphere was mostly nitrogen um, and carbon dioxide, so to speak. Mm, no molecular oxygen, or very little, I should say. Uh, with lots of chemical activity that surrounded uh, the surrounding volcanoes, uh, deep sea hydrothermal vents, and as we'll see in this paper, shallow ponds. Uh, the wet dry cycling around these shallow ponds may have provided the necessary conditions for specific chemical reactions. Now those RNA nucleotides uh, I'm showing you here uh, consist of a phosphoribose backbone, that's the red and blue part of the molecule, and a nucleoside R group, and that's in green, the adenine, uridine, and guanine. Previous chemical studies from this same um, lab, in fact, have generated the purines, the adenine and guanine, uh, from early Earth conditions. Uh, but not all four of those nucleotides have been generated. The group in this study today wanted to generate conditions that would be able to make all four of those nucleotides uh, from a co uh, conditions that consist of prebiotic plausible molecules. Uh, on the next slide, we'll see that they, gener they put together a number of different chemical compounds. Um, they generated the purines. Uh, previously, as I mentioned, and they had done that starting with melanonitrite, uh, melanonitrile, excuse me, uh, and they combined that with sodium nit nitrate to create hydroxyamino melanonitrile in its first step. Um, and so in this schematic, number 18, that compound over there on the upper right-hand side is the melanonitrile. Uh, melanonitrile itself, however, can be generated from cyanoacetylene, which is compound number one here. And so in this um, study, the research group started with cyanoacetylene, uh, thinking that this compound could then lead to the synthesis of both of the compound types, the purines uh, and the pyrimidines, the uracil and the cytosine, shown in blue in this schematic. Now on the next slide, we'll see their starting recipe. Uh, they started uh, including molecules that were found in early Earth atmospheric or volcanic conditions, uh, cyanoacetylene, as I mentioned, hydroxyl urea, uh, hydroimmuno uh, melanonitrile, and amidine. Uh, the chemical transformation of these molecules was driven by wet dry cycles and did require some physical separation of the intermediates, which the authors suggest may have occurred as in separate basins as some of the, the drying cycles progressed. Uh, and these um, reactions also required zinc as a cofactor. But zinc is, is relatively abundant in the Earth's crust, so it's plausible that zinc may have acted as a cofactor in these reactions. Uh, the reactions also assume a fluctuation between both acidic and basic conditions, which the authors suggest could have come from acidic rain, um, acid rain, uh, and carbonates, respectively. The wet-dry cycling may have occurred due to the seasonality that was uh, present even in early day Earth. This model assumes that these reactions did take place on Earth's surface, which is in contrast to other models that have posited an aqueous beginning to life. Uh, the work was covered by Nature News, as we'll see on the next slide. Uh, and in this uh, piece on Nature News, senior author Thomas Carell said that he hopes to next look at the conditions that could lead to ribose generation, uh, the formation of which would also be very important for RNA nucleotide synthesis. 
For a more general look at early RNA nucleotide formation, I recommend this perspective from Nature Communications that discusses an RNA-first or RNA-later camps, as well as a potential role for additional RNA nucleotides in early RNA synthesis. For an alternative theory, check out our previous Microbial Minutes, which discussed research that supports a metabolic hypothesis for the origins of life. Today, organic chemists can generate nucleotides through sophisticated isolation and purification protocols uh, for those reaction intermediates. The research here today demonstrates that nucleotide synthesis of all four RNA nucleotides can take place in a one-pot recipe and may have been important for the formation of early life on Earth. For more research news on the origins of uh, life on Earth, be sure to subscribe to Microbial Minutes and ring the bell for notifications uh, so you get an update every time we post a video. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.